Hello everyone, the Nord Medic here and in this video we will learn about the examination of a lump. So whenever a patient comes to you in the clinic, you take up history from the patient and you proceed for a clinical examination. Now the history gives you certain symptoms, the patient gives you certain symptoms and from clinical examination you get certain signs. And these signs and symptoms help you to go to some provisional diagnosis or differential diagnosis. Right. And from that, you proceed to further steps. So in this video, our main focus will be on the clinical examination of a lump. Now, whenever we perform an examination, any examination has four basic steps. And what are those steps? The steps are inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation, which I simply remember by IPA, IPPA, right? So first we perform inspection. That means we look at the lump with our eyes, then palpation. Palpation means you feel the lump with your hand. Percussion. Percussion means to percuss. That means to tap on the lump and to listen if there is any dull or tympanic note present in that. And finally, auscultation. We use a stethoscope and try to listen to any endogenous sound within the lump. Right. So inspection, palpation, percussion and auscultation. So in case of lumps, most of the lumps will have nothing to percuss except hydrated cysts. About that we will have a different video and there will be nothing to auscultate unless the lump is of an arterial origin where you can get some brui or some venous origin where you can get some venous hum. Otherwise you will have nothing to auscultate or nothing to percuss. The main points of examination of lumps are inspection and palpation. So let's get into the inspection. Now inspection is done under certain headings. So first you look at the lump and first you try to identify whether the lump there's a solitary lump or there's more than one lumps present in a particular region. Now if there's one lump or multiple lump you try to demonstrate the site or try to explain the site that is flexure aspect of forearm or extend or over extensor aspect of the thigh on the dorsum of the penis or on the chest or on the back or over the abdomen like that you see now size now over here whenever you're inspecting you're looking at the lump and trying to ap get an approximate size of the lump maybe you can write approximately three centimeter the lump is right and then you try to comment on the shape of the lump whether the lump is globular or the lump is discoid or the lump is ellipsoid stuff like that then you go for the skin over the lump the skin can be thickened the skin can be atrophied or thinned the skin can be tense over the lump there can be certain uh, discoloration or change in color over the skin so you have to note that down then you have to note down whether there's any scar over the lump or not right now the scar can indicate a history of biopsy incisional biopsy the scar can give uh, help you to diagnose some traumatic etiology of the lump stuff like that and finally you have to see whether there is any draining sinus that means whether there is an opening on the lump from which it is draining some fluid or not pus filled lumps sometimes have draining sinuses through which they drain pus now surrounding you have to examine the surrounding of the lump whether there is any change in the surrounding in the surrounding skin or in the surrounding underlying tissue is there any changes gross changes visible around the lump then you have to check for whether there is any visible calf impulse then you have to check for movement whether the lump is moving with respiration or it is moving with deglutition or it is moving with protrusion of trunk okay so if the lump is moving with respiration that indicates that lump is a, of a diaphragmatic origin or is associated with liver or spleen mostly this happens in case of abdominal lumps if the lump is moving with deglutition deglutition and that's mostly a neck lump and mostly of thyroid origin and if the lump is moving with protrusion of tongue in most of the cases that is a thyroglossal cyst so that's where movement becomes important then pulsation whether you can see any pulsation or not over the lump this you do with you check the pulse of the patient and once you have felt the pulse of the patient you try to see whether the lump is moving with pulsation or not now peristalsis 
in abdominal lump if you get to see peristaltic movements over the lump they are, that indicate lump created by hollow viscous like the intestines large or small and whether there is any pressure effect or not so what is pressure effect like if the lump is creating pressure over a vein or a lymphatic that can cause venous obstruction or lymphatic obstruction which can lead to edema swelling of the limb or a particular organ so that is known as a pressure effect tumors which are also lumps cause pressure effects around them and many of the symptoms of tumors arise from their pressure effect so pressure effect is again very important so these are the points under which we describe inspection of a lump unfortunately i could not find any mnemonic to make your life easier if any one of you have any mnemonic to remember the inspection part of a lump please do let me know in the comment section below so that i can let my other viewers know in the meantime anyway let's move on to the next part which is palpation palpation means we feel the lump with our hand right so in the very beginning whenever we are palpating any part of the body we check the temperature or tenderness if there's elevated temperature that may indicate an active inflammatory process and tenderness means the there's pain on touching that means in normal situation there's no pain on the lump but whenever you're touching over the lump there's pain and where we check the tenderness whenever we check the tenderness we palpate the lump but we look at the face if the patient clinches in pain or clinches its face then it indicates tenderness right then we look for the surface whether the surface is smooth or irregular we check age of the lump that means whether the lump's age is well defined age or there's vaguely defined or ill defined age then we confirm our size we confirm the size over here in palpation and we also confirm the shape in palpation now consistency of the lump that means how how is the feel of the lump right how the lump feels now the consistency can be of three types it can be hard it can be firm or it can be soft okay hard means if you tap over your forehead the feel that you get is your hard feeling if you tap over the tip of your nose the consistency that you get is your firm consistency and if you tap over your ear lobule the consistency that you get is a soft consistency right so these are the consistencies okay now if your lump is soft if your lump is soft then you perform all these tests right that includes compressibility reducibility cough impulse cough impulse in at this time you feel with your hand whether there is any f f cough impulse or not then you go for pulsatility now this pulsatility can be transmitted pulsatility or or expansile pulsatility if the swelling or lump is of directly arterial origin then there will be an expansile pulsatility but if the lump is not of arterial origin but is in very close proximity to an artery then that will be a transmitted variety of pulse that you have to feel with your hands so in palpation basically we try to understand the type of pulsatility then there is something known as fluctuation transillumination and fluid thrill i don't worry i will make separate videos on each of these tests of palpation separately because these topics require or demand a separate detailed discussion so this is what we learn under consistency after that we check for mobility mobility to both mobility or fixity over with skin or underlying deeper structures all right then we assess for any lymph nodes in the periphery or surrounding area of the lump lump with surrounding lymph node enlargement or palpable lymph nodes generally indicate a metastatic tumor so we check for any metastasis in lymph nodes any involvement of vein artery or nerve that we try to palpate and finally we try to palpate if the lump is associated with joint we also try to palpate joint or try to understand whether there is any abnormality with the joint or not so basically this is what we are try to understand in palpation of a lump i believe you have understood this topic well if you have understood this topic please hit the like button share this video among your friends and peers of medical school and for more such amazing content subscribe 
to nerd medic and press the notification to all so that you never ever miss a video from my channel until then bye bye see you in the next one